everybody. Matt with Prohaska Consulting here. Special thanks, as always, to Will and the whole Video News gang for allowing me to lead this great topic, a, a pretty common topic, a pretty popular topic, uh, at an important time with, uh, with important people here. So uh, let's just jump, jump right into it. The topic uh, officially is called How Programmatic Will Power CTV Advertising in 2022. Um, I think we should change. That's probably Will Richmond wanting to get his first name in on the branding or something. It's probably more like how CTV is uh, already powering uh, here in 22, based on uh, the classic uh, start of the hockey stick uh, that uh, we all saw last year. So uh, with me, uh, David, Chris, and Serge will we'll introduce themselves, but uh, do a little bit of uh, an intro, tell us where you're from uh, for uh, context. And, and our role when moderating these, we always start with the person closest to the money. So I believe that's David. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, hi, folks. I'm Dave Leitner. Uh, I head up media at Click Health, a uh, full service media organization uh, focusing on the life sciences category. Good deal. Chris? Sure. Uh, Chris Buckhead, founder and CEO here at Deep Intent. Uh, we're a healthcare DSP. Uh, we focus on building tools for planning, activation, measurement, optimization for all healthcare marketing. Good deal. And Serge from LG Ads, please. Hey, everyone. Uh, Serge Mana from LG Ads, um, president. Uh, LG is one of the largest uh, TV OEMs, as everybody knows, both in the US and uh, globally. Good deal. So we always uh, typically start with the theory and then get into practice. But the neat part about uh, having these three gentlemen uh, with us here at the same time is that they're already working together. Um, so let, let's actually get into the weeds and then zoom back out around what this means, not just the, in the healthcare space, but obviously for all categories, uh, B2C, B2B. So David, can you kind of just describe without uh, breaking too many NDAs, but making a little bit of uh, uh, news and UZE he, e here uh, for, uh, for our friends and audiences, kind of what, what the deal is and how, you, how the three of you got together and what you're working on. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, since the pandemic, I mean, that's been the accelerant to the world of, of CTV. I mean, it's been coming. We've all been probably maybe dabbling in it to varying degrees, but that was definitely the moment where both feet were put on the gas pedal. Uh, and with that, it really just led the conversation with clients around how are we going to start to get involved? And I think the one thing that's always happened is advertisers tend to follow the eyeballs. And as we saw the eyeballs shifting more at that accelerated rate, it was who are the right partners? How do we get involved in a way that's safe, comfortable, preferably measurable, uh, and bringing the best of what digital has had to offer now for decades into a medium that's also been heavily relied on in the TV content space. So that's where we focus the conversations. And so far we've seen a lot of success as those investments have gone somewhere between direct with publishers as well as aggregators, but programmatic has been a driving engine in a lot of the, the execution of that investment. So then Chris, talk about uh, you know, how you're working with, with David's agency and then how that applies to a, a top CT publisher uh, like LG. Yeah, so, so before the pandemic, Deep Intent has been working heavily on trying to build uh, bridging between clinical data, health data, and programmatic. Uh, so how that manifests is in tooling that allows healthcare marketers, agencies, the brand managers to look at different sorts of slice of clinical data to help inform the way that they're delivering advertising campaigns. So the first kind of manifest of that was uh, a planning tool that allowed us to basically slice and dice different sorts of healthcare provider audiences, soon to be patient audiences. Uh, again, doing that in a privacy safe way is a very challenging topic. So you have to deal with a lot of, uh, a lot of data that's regulated by HIPAA and all the other, uh, all the other uh, legislation around that, regulation around that. Uh, but to do that in a safe way, right, we've extended that into activation through the DSP and now through measurement and optimization. So it was actually perfect timing in a lot of ways for us, you know, hitting, talk about hitting the, the timing just right. Uh, we had built all this tooling for the open web, for, for digital, you know, everything else, uh, display and, and online video. And like everything else that's programmatically traded, it's all RTB, right? It's all can be done in a real time biddable basis. Uh, so the extension of our platform to connect to television and partnering with folks like Surge and the LG team was just a no brainer for us. And of, of course, I'm search, sure Surge will uh, talk a little bit more about some of the unique data he has, but we saw a lot of value in the opportunity to bring the supply side closer with our platform. And that's why we decided to, to invest heavily in the idea of bringing LG and Deep Intent together uh, in the year to come. Nice. So, Serge, uh, give us some some context. That, you know, it, we're we're all uh, sadly old enough, uh, but fortunately old enough to know 
that uh, and remember how you know healthcare, uh, along with probably uh, you know big pharma and big CPG, typically in the '90s, 2000s, whenever there was a new digital media channel, they were always the laggards, and it was you know having to do the the long drive to Jersey and to you know take a year to get folk you know change hearts and minds um, and get people past the HIPAA excuse, which has you know, depending on the tactic, 10% legitimacy and 90% just a throwaway line for a lot of people that we've all uh, done calling on various healthcare uh, folks. But it seems like here, you know, is it a coincidence that, uh, you know, CTV and, and healthcare are two of the largest uh, uh, spikes in consumer uh, activity, uh, obviously, in the last 20 months here? Or is there something to uh, what you guys have built and just the, the channel overall that uh, caters a little bit more to tapping uh, uh, the, the vast uh, uh, spending and, and frankly, the, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to have different touch points on a site sound motion. I think it, it has to do with a lot of things, right? I think the fact is, first of all, the, on, from a CTV perspective, the, we see obviously everybody here seeing the shift from linear to CTV. That's not, any, that's not new news to anybody, right? That is, that is absolutely happening. Where, when we came into town, we've been, we've been in business now from an LG Ads solutions for just the past year. And we didn't have a media team even six months, seven months ago, media sales team. So we had to go and build that ground up. Now, healthcare came in and we've obviously had a relationship with the deep intent folks and, and the folks at Click as well. But it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's a great marriage in the sense that CTV in what we're doing and what others in the space are doing is we have proprietary first party data. We have a, so it's very measurable, unlike linear where you can go and we can have a separate five hour discussion about the measurability and the scalability of linear. In here, we're building, leveraging our ACR technology, our um, basically automated content recognition data that's all opt in fully compliant, privacy compliant, HIPAA, all of that stuff. And we are able to see very specific audiences of what they're consuming, what they're watching on CTV, and then being able to, with partnerships like um, Deep Intent, they go ahead and, um, you know, we're no experts in healthcare by any stretch of the imagination. And I wanted to get the experts in, in, in um, with us. And we were like, let's, let's partner instead of trying to figure out, you know, yes, I agree with you, Matt, on the 90-10 thing on HIPAA, but the 10% is still tough, right? And it's still really, really tough for anybody, like especially a new entrant, you know, try to try to figure it out. So we decided to outsource that and uh, partner with the best and uh, we, we chose, but it's, it's again, the ease of use, the granular audiences, and then the best is at the end, the measurability of it all, right? So it's, it's all full 360. Yep. So for context and to now kind of zoom back out and talk about uh, broader trends uh, for all three of you guys and your firms. Um, so I'm uh, sitting in our conference room in our New York headquarters here, and it was this exact room two and a half years ago when I told our uh, leadership team in our uh, offsite slash insight that, uh, you know, the two things I thought we'd do the most work on were not by coincidence, the same two things that Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple have in spades and thousands of other brands and publishers don't. Number one's identity and number two is attribution and measurement. Um, I, I, go, I think back even further uh, when I was, uh, well, slightly skinnier and uh, slightly younger. So in 1996, when I left BBDO after starting their, uh, being lucky enough to start their digital media practice and went to CNET and they said, well, you know, why are you going into this internet thing? And at the time, this will date myself and linear TV. I said, I'm tired of watching World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and seeing menopause ads. Um, I wasn't in market then. I'm fortunately not in market personally now. Um, I wasn't ready to buy for someone else on that. And so, you know, I mean, that's the, the classic traditional, you know, big pharma, linear TV, I mean, I remember when uh, I was at Turner before that, the joke was CNN's demo was 55 to dead. Um, and you just never bought that. I mean, laughing now because uh, A, how myopic that was when two out of three dollars are controlled by people 55 and over. Um, but, you know, so David, with, with all the jokes aside and everything and references, let's talk about addressability and, 
you know, kind of what, what this does, given the rest of the portfolio of Click and uh, with, with, with brands and, and all the different tactics, were, were there, you know, some moments beyond following eyeballs, which we know is the, the classic lag um, and, uh, you know, happens in marketing, but what other things around CTV specifically, either in the moment in a pandemic when we all kind of recognize that ourselves as consumers or what other dynamics within the agencies or conversations with your clients kind of led to uh, the increases here? Uh, it, it, a, lot, a lot of it was getting people comfortable in the space. I mean, there's a familiarity around linear TV, right? There are uniform standards about unit lengths and how to serve an ad and what can I measure and how are we going to go about it? And a lot of that was not shared when it got into the CTV space. And so there were conversations around, look, everything has pros and cons. And here are the things that we know, and there are gonna be some things that we don't know, but it outweighs in the form of, you still gotta press forward and get involved. And a lot of the conversations came around, well, where is it from a cross video, cross channel, cross platform measurement, because measurement right now is still the big conversation, basically prove it to me. And that's what everyone wants. And when you don't have that at your fingertips, you're kind of figuring, how do I get involved? And the, the, the biggest conversation came from clients that had heavily invested in TV for years to say, I have an MMM that I get on a basically annual basis. And I got an ROI. It's not the biggest ROI out of everything that we're measuring, but the volume that comes with it is the, the, the biggest by far. And can I move money from linear to CTV? And can I get a one for one or even better off a one for a 1.25 conversion by moving that dollar over to CTV? And that's where the conversations have led to a lot of tests to learn. Let's figure it out. And I will tell you like everything else it's not one size fits all. Within the healthcare space, you've got black box drugs that have to run 90 second ads. You can run shorter form reminders. Um, and you've also got right now, I think the biggest dynamic and the thing that I'm really excited about is it's not just the legacy TV spenders that had to commit millions of dollars in the form of an upfront or were able to deal with the lack of flexibility from a scatter. I can get involved in CTV with less out of pocket and still get a sense for what comes next. And so you have rare disease brands that were never getting involved with video that we've had multiple clients kind of engage and start to spend in that space to see what, what can we get from this and where do we go next? Yeah, I'm gonna go back to Chris, but Serge, I mean, just picking up on that point around the, the, the broader brands, I mean, I would think, you know, some of the, uh, some of the challenger D to C brands uh, that obviously, you know, ran the playbook of we're gonna do social media because that's where the founders came from and knew and lived and breathed and leveraged that. And then, all right, well, what are we gonna do next? Oh, wow, when we go to linear TV, that we've made it. We've stopped. And then there's that, you know, what, what, what's in between and obviously moving that from, from linear to CTV, I, I would think the portfolio, you know, nine months in personally and for your whole practice uh, has, you know, has wind out and, and you're able to, uh, you know, you can have your form of, a, of an upfront just to control supply and demand there. But, you know, the ability to test and learn obviously is uh, part of the benefit wrong, of, of data-driven programmatic buying and selling anyway, right? It, it's really, is crazy. It's, you know, I keep on telling we're riding this rocket ship and it is really, and we're only, we haven't even launched. It's it's unbelievable the amount of momentum that you're that we're seeing. And I think it's not just in, it, it's, I can't name any category that is lagging. I really can't. It's, it's, we're seeing it across. Now, obviously, as when we started the media entertainment one, the endemic partners, that's kind of a no-brainer. A lot of those are kind of must-buys. What are you, you're going to ignore one of the largest OEMs in the, in the world? You can't, right? So that, that doesn't make sense. But, now, but then over, and I, we thought, frankly, we thought it would take a year, year and a half to see other uh, categories like telecom, like um, uh, travel. We didn't think travel would show up. All of a sudden it did, could, did really big in Q3 and Q4, um, you know, pre-Omicron. Um, and, then, and then obviously healthcare. So it's across the board, insurance, it's across the board. It really is across the board. But that said, with all of this, yes, I agree completely with, with what everyone is saying, but I think we can do more. Right. I think there is uh, we can elevate this category so much more and get so much more dollars quicker than ever before. Um, there is a place where measurement is great. Measurement is 
definitely there. It is available. There's no doubt the data is there. And there's, it's available by the OEMs and it's also available by independent third parties. It's a, it's, it is available. But that said, measurement is only going to be a slice of this solution because that's always after the fact, right? And one of the things that um, I know Chris is pushing, we will be pushing as well is, how do you do it before the fact? How do you provide it as outcome-based and guarantees so that the performance-based um, CTV is where I think this is all going? Because frankly, you wanna shift dollars from linear or bring it an, or a new category? Make it performance baked and make it independently measured by a third party. You're hitting all the tingly words there, Serge. I mean, you're talking about outcomes, your guarantees. I mean, this is all, this is the future though, of what I think, Serge, what gets me most excited when we talk about the future with LG. And, you know, it, Matt, back to, your, uh, back to your example of the really crappy targeted ad for, you know, uh, menopause, right? I, I think that in itself, if you have to put a label and a price tag on, on how big of a problem that is, that's a $5 billion problem that's waiting to be solved, right? And like that, that to us, and, and Dave, you hit on the point of measurability being the kind of the first step of like, how do you prove that this new channel, this new medium CTV works? That's exactly where, you know, Serge and I have been spending a lot of time thinking about how do we take all the best data that LG has, all the best data that Deep Intent has, marry it together, both basically the marriage of health data and media data, bring that together and make a compelling case, A, on measurement, but then thinking back, Serge, to your point, how do we actually get it more for planning, right? Get it back into the planning process so that we can do maybe something like talking about transforming the upfront to more of a guaranteed type body. You want a thousand COPD or let's say uh, a million COPD patients, we'll find those and then we can guarantee performance and reach against those audiences and possibly even outcomes like meaning script performance, right? And script lift. So that's, that's to me is the future of where this is all going. And you can only do it through kind of these, the, the triangle here where you have the data, you have the media, and then obviously the advertiser on board with that idea. Before I ask Chris a follow-up question, I need to apologize to him. Those of you who have checked out his LinkedIn profile and scrolled have realized, wait a minute, Matt, he's not an old user like you are. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so um, Chris, going back to you as a, as a 40 under 40 winner, um, you have been around long enough to though to obviously see a, a couple of trends here and, and wanted to see how... Uh, uh, while we've all probably filled everyone's bingo card out with, uh, with all the proper terminology, let's, let's ask a couple more pressing questions on the integration of identity and, and attribution and measurement partners uh, for your platform. Um, you know, we've been, uh, we've been communicating out this uh, narrative and analogy of a choose your own adventure where, you know, beforehand buyer and seller using appropriate tech in between set the terms ahead of time, like you were just talking about. And it's basically a pick, well, these are my strategies and tactics. So therefore, this is how I'm gonna keep score. And so this, this is the series of measurement players I will allow yeah. to rubber stamp this, right? How is that, are you seeing that same thing uh, with, with not just the two gentlemen here, but others in other categories? And, and then how is the integration roadmap going for you uh, with this um, wonderful group of more than 75 players, not just that Kelly from NBC Universal has publicly uh, nicely touted that'll match a, a roadmap that uh, Rachel and our research uh, team are, are working on to uh, showcase all of the a and players, but we all know that we got to get the first few integrated to actually prove out that yes, this mix is okay not going with one default monopoly for 70 years anymore, right? So, so first off, I do have gray hair. So I, to set the age, it, it, that is, I think, a right. Yeah, you, you colored it probably beforehand when you saw who <laughs> with. So that's kind of me. Uh, to, to, to get back to your question, you know, one of the benefits, you know, we've partnered, the way that we approach identity, we take kind of a hub and spoke approach, right? So we work with Kind of a spine of data set, you know, we have a kind of an HCP for, for those who are not in the healthcare space. That's your healthcare provider uh, audiences. And there's only, let's say, less than 2 million of those in the United States, but albeit a very highly valuable audience. And we've built, that was how we first started. Um, but then on the, on the consumer side, and I don't say patient because that's a clear, obviously, a, a delineation there between what you can or can't do. But we've built a consumer graph using partnerships like Epsilon and some other big, big, uh, you know, big consumer demographic data data partners. Um, 
the, the whole point there is that we take a very agnostic approach to the way that we are treating data. And so as Serge knows, we've, we spent countless hours talking about different sorts of partners that help link these offline profiles or the online profiles. We are simply as a DSP, as kind of the middleware, if you will, helping to coordinate all of the great partners for both measurement and identity. Well, while we do have our own measurement capability, and in fact, we use that often for optimization, uh, actually more so than probably being held against a scorecard for source of truth. It is very effective at both, right? In order to optimize, you, knew, you do need to be able to measure. So whether a client's using a, a third party, um, you know, other, other platform that they have opted to use or not, we do see high correlation between our performance and gains that we see on our platform and the gains that they see on third parties, right? So um, that's been that's been actually one of the proof points that we've we've been at an early stage had set out to do. But I think you know it, what's interesting, Matt. You know, thinking about the future of the open web and thinking about CTV. You know, the open web. I have a kind of a, a thesis here that that's going to look more and more like this balkanization of CTV. And what I mean by that is you have all these little fiefdoms, right, in the CTV ecosystem. Everybody has varying levels of capabilities technically and even in the data. That in the open web, when that cookie goes away, that great currency of a cookie is, is no longer, right? So how do you find, how do you partner with, with platforms and who's gonna be best positioned to do that? It's gonna be, I think, in my opinion, the DSPs who can help span across all these, these little microcosms of highly valuable data and inventory combinations and be able to orchestrate cross, you know, kind of cross fiefdom, right? Cross wall uh, type of media buys. Uh, and that, that's applicable for, for all, not just healthcare, but all verticals going forward. We know Jeff Green, our friend, would agree with you. Um, we know, however, though, that our, uh, the good folks at Roku and Google don't agree with you and think that uh, folks like David can get it done uh, having to be forced to use their DSP exclusively to buy certain inventory. Uh, with that, we go to Surge, um, not to uh, put you on the spot here, but uh, A, um, you can either take uh, more on the measurement side, which I know you have a little bit of uh, experience and folks may know that uh, you only spent 16 years at Comscore. So that's why uh, we saw an extra smile when talking about uh, the, the old Darth Vader of his uh, at Nielsen um, for a long time there. But so yeah, Serge would be great first to, uh, to, to get your take please on the, on the attribution of measurement uh, practices and kind of how you guys are, are building the, the flexibility in the eco or and, and hey, we're Switzerland, or is it, well, actually with our service, with our data on our O and O and other inventory, actually we need to go this way to prove out to the industry that we're really working well for them and delivering. Yeah, no, that's a good question. You know, we thought about it really, this was a lot of discussion, right? A lot of strategy discussions is which route are we going to take? Are we going to take the route where we're going to be completely a walled garden and we have our data, we have our inventory and we have our screens and we're gonna just leverage it for ourselves and um, that's it. And there's an easy path for that. We don't have to do any deals. We don't have to do any partnerships. Um, and there's a model. There's other players in our space that we can easily copy. And um, that is something that we thought hard and we were like, okay, but based on where we are, is that the right path? And is that where the industry is heading to? And then we had discussions with the broadcasters and with other, with other uh, folks. And we realized, and we came to the conclusion that we're not gonna be a walled garden, but we're not gonna be an open garden either. And the way we're calling ourselves is we're gonna be a gated community and you're gonna have a passcode. And I'm gonna give a passcode to folks that I'm not gonna give it to everybody, but I'm going to give it to ones that I'm going to that I want we we want to truly partner with, and we think that is not going to cannibalize our existing business, and is going to do well for the industry as a whole. Great example of that, obviously, is the deep intent relationship. Another example is we announced this late last year is our relationship with iSpot TV. So where we are providing our data and iSpot today, as you can, as, as mentioned, Kelly, that you mentioned, uh, Kelly at NBC just selected them to do some starting some testing on cross-platform measurement. Yeah, just a couple that's, weeks ago. Yeah, so that's, that's exciting. I'm not, we're not doing anything exclusive by any stretch of the imagination, but we're going to pick partners, again, in a gated community with a passcode, and um, we're not going to be a total wall garden. Again, what we will... And the, the, the beautiful thing about LG is this is not just a, this is not, not just a US-based offering. Like 
we have 125 million TVs and growing globally where we are going to be deploying our ACR worldwide. Um, there is no doubt that we will have ACR data coming from TVs in UK, in EU5, in Australia in 2022. So that is, that is the opportunity. And, you know, we're going to, again, we're going to do it in a measured approach, but um, we're, we, have to, we have to evolve this industry. We're not going to be, you know, one, a walled garden 100%. That's just not, as you mentioned, I have a measurement background. There's no way we're going to have a completely walled garden approach. On behalf of all the fans of the open uh, web and eco, thanks. Um, good. I, uh, I, spent, uh, I spent an hour personally talking to the CTO of one of the aforementioned companies, trying to convince them to be at least partially open, as, as you suggested, and uh, temporarily uh, lost that fight. But uh, the, uh, you know, to, well, it won't, because fortunately, a lot of clients and other good folks like uh, David kind of demand that uh, and, and have real uh, convincing and money to uh, hopefully take action based on those that allow them to do what they want to do for their clients, reaching the right consumers in a more open and flexible way. So it isn't just a great experience if you spend within one o and eco only, and then you are clueless whenever you go somewhere else. So, I mean, David, it, it, we've all We've all seen, uh, thank God, the other evolution around reach and frequency, right, in CTV. I mean, it, a lot of it was just kind of classic immaturity and supply and demand issues where you saw the same freaking ad in pod position A 11 times in a row, and you're like, dude, this isn't. And we saw the same thing in pre-roll uh, on so-called digital video years ago, right? We saw the same. So, um, I mean, not just because Serge and Chris are here, but uh, what you just heard in terms of gated community, uh, you know, at least being closer to the middle of the spectrum, if you will, between that and open, uh, that, uh, that, that helps, I would think, more than it hurts in terms of what you can do for your clients, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not interested in gardens or gardening. I'm even less interested in walled gardens. Um, and the way I look at this, uh, I'll use the example. I love the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. And the scene, if anybody remembers it, uh, the guy's looking for a medallion to go figure out where to go find the ark. And picks it up, singes it on his hand, and thinks he's got the map. Unbeknownst, he doesn't know there's a second side of you know detail that he's missing. So eventually, he's digging in the wrong place, and that's what it's going to feel like. Where I've only got half the information, and so I may be digging in the wrong place because I don't have that full picture. So it's going to come down to look. There will be some walled gardens, probably those who have the scale that you almost have to work with. But the reality is, is to have as few of the as possible so that it's less work intensive, but you can still get as much accuracy at the end of the day as possible. And that's the balance that I think will come over time. I love the progress that's being made. We all wanted it done five years ago, but at least now we're seeing evidence of, of forward progress. And I think whether it's Nielsen, iSpy, you know, anybody else, this, you got ACR data, you got set top box data, there's enough out there right now that we should be able to work in an age of technology and get that information in volumes with a lot of speed. That's where we David, want to get to. Um, I think David, uh, Chris may not have gotten your analogy of the arcs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You, you know what? I, 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 was, I was raised, up, I watched it, I watched it. It was one of my favorite, my favorite movies growing up. So. That's so great. So <laughs> this is one of the things that's tougher to do on Zoom than in real life, because I would have looked down intentionally, like subtly when David was talking to me, like, so Chris, Raiders of the Lost Ark was this movie, but <laughs> and, and we would have moved on, but you know, at least now in a more linear form, search, well done. Very well, thank you for taking the cross panelist uh, abuse uh, uh, responsibility away, away from me uh, for once. Nice. So, all right. So, two questions to whip around uh, in our last five minutes here. Um, give a shout out to someone in each other's category, not on the screen right now, in terms of getting it done well. So, David, on the, you know, take a look at the either platform or, or publisher side. Chris for buyer or seller side. Serge for, you know, platform or buyer side. Who else out there you want to give kudos going? Yep, they, they, uh, they, uh, they, they walked the walk and they actually worked with us in this area and we're all better for it. And that's why 22 is already on everybody's charts higher when we thought that was going to be like 24 or 25. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I wish it was an easy answer. I'm going to give you to me what might be the obvious one. Everyone's going to be like, yeah, I'm okay, no kidding. But I mean, Hulu um, working it, again through a programmatic way, given what they've been able to bring to the market over the last couple of years, is definitely somebody that's been great to work with. And I say that, and I'm going to throw a little, you know, uh, offer over to Chris too, because what he's doing specific to healthcare, it's it is unique. Um, and those two folks are, you know, in a lot of our conversations, rightfully so. Nice. Yeah, I think for us, oh, it, yeah, I think for us, it's really interesting, and people are surprised to see uh, to to hear this from us. Is I credit our success at least in the past nine months to all of the other OEMs. I think they've educated the industry. It is very rare for us to go in and say, "Here's the value of CTV." You know what Samsung has done, what Roku has done, what Vizio has done is fantastic, and they continue to grow. You know, we might be taking a different approach, but the fact that they have educated the industry uh, so well and have grown uh, grown uh, as for us is kudos to them. Yeah, nice having, you know, third mover advantage. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, with a product that, you know, it's not like LG just started making TV Correct. or other electronics. Uh, uh, good one, Chris? Yeah, so on the same vein, I actually credit, I think the trade desk has done a great job, I think setting kind of the, you know, creating the gauntlet, right, for, for helping advertisers in general and mass see the opportunity in CTV. That said, as a second mover advantage, I do think that there is a lot of work that we're doing, right, that makes it a lot more custom and specific given the niche and vertical that we're in. So trade desk, yeah, I think they're doing a great job on, on that side, mass market. I think it's a great platform for those use cases. And you know has really helped educate, I think, the overall marketplace on the opportunity that is in CTV. And also, thank you, Facebook, for shutting off health advertising and Google within their platforms, because that basically means that we can now be the only platform there. Nice little bonus <laughs> um, with the complete, you know, a uh, lot of babies tossed out of that bathwater. Um, oh. Indeed. All right, so last getaway question here, a uh, classic one. We'll start with uh, David, go to Chris, and let Serge close it out. Um, one thing that uh, needs to be fixed, just one thing uh, that needs to be fixed for 22, that uh, if we're uh, uh, lucky enough to be invited back by Will uh, in a year, sitting here or on a uh, real stage, um, we go, man, that was awful last year, but thank God we got most or all that done in the last year together, where would you, where would you go? I mean, if I had to say where I would go, I mean, I want measurement resolved. So I'm sorry, as my early holiday wish list item, but I, you know, I'm not going to be a fool and think it's going to land by the end of this year. Um, yeah, but what's that, what's that mean? Like, so give us a, you know, give us the, the outcome statement uh, at the top of the slide. So, you know, David wants this to be done by these players so we can do this by this date. Like, so what's that mean? It's a lot of, again, what Serge and Chris and others are, are working towards right now, stitching all of the viewership data into the, the, the media points, into the back-end business data. To say, I want a full view. And honestly, what it comes down to, I'll, I'll say it this way. Forget about the word measurement. I'll say, and this goes for a variety of different things, uniform industry standards. I need things to be uniform. So the more it's uniform, a lot easier it is to buy. Clients are like, oh, this isn't complicated. It's not this way for this one and that way for that one. Because as soon as that happens, not everyone's going to be invited to the party. Can't do it that way. No one has the budgets for it. So uniformity, I'll bring it back to some way that's consistent measurement is, I'll make that my final answer. Um, three folks, we have meetings coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks after this uh, airs here uh, in late Jan. Uh, Tony Katzer, uh, Angelina Eng, and Sean Cunningham, I think, uh, would be uh, excited to hear you say that because pretty sure they're working on that. Uh, Chris? Yeah, um, I think much the same way, you know, David's talking about measurement. I think for us, it's really helping to create that one-stop shop for, you know, access and, and media buying across different sorts of community gardens, right, and the open web. And I think for me, you know, the headline would be kind of unifying access, right, and making that data driven across all these different platforms. So obviously that would take a, it's going to take a lot of work and something we're committed to, but it does marry a lot of the points that David, you mentioned, which is identity and measurement all need to be seamless, right? And I think for us, if we can accomplish that in 2022, which I think we're well positioned to do, it's gonna look really good for the years to come. Yeah, you know, I think- Stop, Serge. 
Yeah, for us, it's two things. I, I think it's, like I mentioned, one performance-based uh, guarantees or uh, performance marketing is going to be an outcome-based. It's going to be really important to drive this industry. The second one is really from a user experience. In order to get more adoption on this, it's just making the CTV apps more discoverable and getting that on the TV just easier to navigate. Right now, to be honest, we all don't do a great job at it and it, you can get easily lost and to try to find the content that you're looking for. Indeed, and with that, um, hopefully Will won't uh, change the name of this uh, panel, uh, especially thanks to Chris, to the old men in the CTV, but uh, you know, fortunately, <laughs> Believe you on that awful uh, pun and plan words for you, uh, literature buffs. Um, a big thanks again to uh, Will for giving us the virtual stage here, and a special thanks to Serge, Chris, and David. Great conversation, great insights. Thanks, gentlemen. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, thanks, Will. Take care, guys.